Hey yo, what's good everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host Utica, undeniably the illest cat around. Here with my bro host extraordinaire. Y'all know who it is, it's Ray Bucks. We're celebrating our 30th episode. We'll be covering this weekend's fight night card between Gilbert Burns and Sean Brady. It's going to be a welterweight bout. We're going to go into the first fight of the night, though. We have a featherweight bout between two UFC debuts. Uh, we got Zemiskis or Zygmantis Ramaska going up against Nathan Fletcher. Uh, once again, both these guys are making their UFC debut. We got Ramaska coming in at 9-2 and two overall and 4-1 and one in their last five. We got Nathan Fletcher once again making their UFC debut. Eight and one overall and four and one in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Ramaska in this one. Um, I just believe they have more routes to victory. Uh feels like uh they'll have the edge in the striking department against Fletcher. Um Fletcher, they're gonna have, you know, some grapp grappling capabilities. Um that they they probably have the edge in, but overall, I just think that uh, Ramaska has more routes to victory. I'll be going with them. I think Ramaska also has more routes to victory. Um, and in addition to that, Nathan Fletcher is moving up in weight um, to fight this fight, uh, which I think is a, a bad look, bad idea. <clears throat> in addition to that, uh, uh, Fletcher has recently had like a, a, a broken limb um, of sorts, so broken arm, I believe uh no, i'm not quite yeah, sure he, he broke some shit you yeah know what I mean? they did yeah they did have an injury they had an injury so uh i don't think i think it's been a, a kind of a quicker turnaround you know what i mean broken limbs just kind of throw you off a little bit so i've got to go with ramasco on this one okay okay feel you okay up next we got a middleweight bout we got andre petrosky going up against dylan budka uh, we got Petrosky coming in. They are six and two in the UFC, eleven and three overall, and three and two in their last five. We got Dylan Budka coming in. They are, I believe, one and one in the UFC, zero oh and one in the UFC, um, seven and three overall, and three and two in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Petrosky in this bout. I just believe they're gonna have the edge in the grappling. And actually, the edge and the striking as well. Um, they're just getting better. Uh, you know, they got a little bit more UFC experience. Budka um, wasn't too impressed in their last uh, outing. They, um, you know, just dove for a takedown. Kind of were relentless with trying to get it. And just ended up, you know, getting the side of their head smashed in. So, um, I'll be going with Petrosky in this bout. Um, yeah, I got to go with Petrosky over Budka too. Um, you know what I mean? Buck hasn't won at a UFC level. Um, I don't think he's a UFC caliber fighter, uh, just yet. I think he's on the cusp. Um, I think maybe he needs to hit back to the uh, contender series or, or, or road to UFC or, or whatever it is that's going to get him there. Um, I just don't think, um, he's the one, you know, I, I just don't think he's going to get his first win, um, versus, uh, uh, Petrosky in this particular fight, uh, because Petrosky is a dog. Uh, Petrovsky definitely has chin issues for sure. We all know this, but Buck is not going to be the one to touch it. Yeah, I agree. Um, moving on, we <clears> have <throat> a strawweight bout. We got Jacqueline Almorum going up against Vanessa Demopoulos. Um, we got Jacqueline Almorum coming in. They are two and one in the UFC. 8-1 overall and 4-1 and one in their last five. We got Demopolis coming in. They are going to be 5-2 and two in the UFC, 11-5 and five overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five as well. I'm going to be going with Demopolis in this fight. I just think that they are a dog fighter who's going to be able to actually take uh, um, Amarim to you know deeper waters than what they're used to. And as long as they can, you know, stay out of the grappling exchanges, I feel like they may have, you know, the advantage on the feet. And, uh, yeah, if they're able to uh, take this to a decision, they're, they're pretty much a decision machine. I believe that they can come out on top with this fight, you know, squeak out, you know, a couple of rounds. Uh, but it will be the, the, you know, rounds two and three. Uh, and as long as they can weather the storm against Amarim in the 
first round. And once again, stay out of those grappling exchanges. I think they'll be all right. I disagree. I think Amarin is going to mop her shit uh, on Demopolis. Because um, uh, Demopolis is a fucking decision machine. Um, she's an okay fighter. Uh, she, I don't think she has that dog in her necessarily. Um, the, in my opinion, the heart's not there. Um, where I see uh, Armin getting better every single time she fights, uh, you just see a little bit um, of something new being added to her game. So uh, definitely got to go with uh, Armin. Okay, okay. Uh, moving on, we have a featherweight bout in the men's division. We got Gabriel Santos going up against Yinza. Uh, we got Santos coming in. They are going to be 0-2 in the UFC, um, 10-2 overall, and 3-2 and in their last five. We got Yinza coming in. I believe they're making their UFC debut. Oh, actually, okay. Uh, Yinza's coming in. They're going to be 0-1 in the UFC, 25-4 and overall, and 4-1 and in their last five. I'm going to be going with Santos. Uh... I just believe that um, both these guys are probably going to be uh, going, you know, for the grappling. You know, they can stand up, but I think this bout will probably take place primarily on the ground. And I just feel like Santos will have the edge in that regard. Um, searching for their first win. Um, I just, I think that they'll be the one to take this one. I think Santos definitely takes this one. Um the guys, the other guys, unproven. Um, those those weird like road to UFC records, in my opinion, like they're just they're they're fraud, uh, they're fugazi, uh, they're not real. Uh, I'm not saying that he didn't actually fight these people, but like he didn't fight anybody that anybody knows, and I don't think they, they hold any weight or hold any water um, with uh, UFC caliber uh, competition. So I've definitely got to go with Santos as well. All right, moving on. We have a flyweight bout in the men's division. We got Andre Lima going up against Felipe Dos Santos. We got Andre Lima coming in. They are undefeated in the UFC. They are 2-0. They are 9-0 overall. And uh, we got Felipe Dos Santos coming in. I believe they are 1-1 one one in the UFC. Eight and one with one no contest overall, and four and one in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Lima. They're just gonna be the cleaner striker, and even though they'll be the cleaner striker, they're still gonna match uh Dos Santos's uh, uh aggressiveness. Huh? So um, I just think that this is gonna just be an easy one for them to be totally honest. Uh, it's gonna be a fun one. You know, because Dos Santos kind of, you know, has reckless abandonment when with their striking. Uh, but they're just not going to be on the level, you know. I mean, this is a tough one. This is a tough one to call. Um, I felt really good about Lima until I started really, like, watching a video and shit on uh, Dos Santos. Dos Santos is a great fighter. Um, he, he is very active. He's very aggressive, uh, the same way that Lima is. Um and I wonder a little bit if if uh, Lima's lost his edge, um, just because he did get that that bite of the night bonus, uh, which was able to like probably sustain him and help him, you know what I mean, uh, financially, to where like all of a sudden now you don't have as much uh, uh, pressure on you to like be better. Mm -hmm. um, so that scares me a little bit, but I truly do believe Lima's going to take this one down because he is just a, a, a very uh, a good striker, a, a very aggressive uh, fighter, and uh, very quick, like super quick in my opinion. So, I mean, I got to go with Lima on this one. Nice, nice. All right, we got a featherweight bout up next. We got Isaac Dolgarian going up against Brandon Marat. <clears throat> uh, we got Dolgarian coming in. They're 1-1 one one in the UFC, 6-1 and one overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five. We got Brendan Marat coming in. They're going to be 0-1 in the UFC, 8-2 overall, and 3-2 and in their last five. Um, I'm going to be going with Dolgarian. They're the super-duper heavy favorite in this bout. I'm going to go with Dolgarian in this fight. <laughs> Let's just go with that. He's super heavy favorite. He's probably going to fucking grapple this fool to death. 
ground and pound him out or submit him. Uh, yeah, I don't think Brandon Marat's got much for homeboy. Uh, I almost feel like this is kind of like a prop up fight because he got robbed in his last bout or what some will say is perceived as a robbery in his last bout against Christian Rodriguez. So they're just, you know, giving him one, you know, back with this Marat bout. Uh, I, I kind of agree with that. Uh, I will say um, Marat's not a bad fighter. Marat's a great fighter, um, but he has been starched, and very recently he's been starched. Um, and I'm always worried about a fighter just running back into the in the ring after that, you know what I mean? Um, so I've got to go with Isaac Dolgarian just because, you know what I mean, once that chin's been tapped, and, and if you don't give it enough time to recover... Uh, you're just going to put yourself in a bad situation. Um, so I'm definitely going to go with Dalgarian on this one. Okay, okay. Uh, up next, we got a lightweight bout. We got Ron Zhu going up against Chris Padilla. We got Ron Zhu coming in. They are 1-2 and two in the UFC, 25-5 and five overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five. We got Chris Padilla coming in. They are going to be 1-0 and zero in the UFC. 14 and 6 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5. I'm going to be going with Chris Padilla. I just believe that they're going to have the edge in the grappling department and uh you know they got hands and they've you know they're one of those like experienced guys who are just finally getting their, you know, opportunity in the UFC and I believe that they're definitely going to be a lot more hungrier and um you know just um willing, you know, doing whatever it takes to you know uh keep this spot and just <clears throat> with the company so i'll be going with padilla in this one i'm running with chris padilla um he took james long top on like a very short notice fight i want to say it was within weeks like like a couple or one or something very very close to that maybe 10 days um and was able to take down i want to believe that was a heavy favorite for long top on that particular fight and he was able to take him down or not take him down but like to defeat him and yeah. uh, uh, win yeah, that. Yeah, that was a, a yeah. short notice bout. Very short notice bout. And uh, so, like, you got to respect that. Um, it means he stays in fighting shape. He's, he stays ready. You know what I mean? He stays ready so he ain't got to get ready. Mm -hmm. um, his fucking nickname is fucking, like, El Taco. I mean, I respect that. That's a fucking great name. I like tacos. Uh, just hopefully he doesn't act like a pink taco. Bruh. So <laughs> I'm going with uh, Chris Padilla on this one. All right. <laughs> Uh, moving on to a lightweight bout, we have Trevor Peak going up against Yanal Oshmosh. We got Trevor Peak. They are coming in two and two in the UFC, nine and two with one no contest overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Yanal Oshmosh coming in. They are one and one in the UFC. Seven and one overall, and four and one in their last five bouts. I'm gonna be going with Trevor Peak in this one. Um, Trevor Peak, you know, he's like, uh, I guess you could say like a lightweight, uh, Drickus Duplicy, you know, just kind of like going in there, throwing fucking shots, uh, taking uh, shots to the grill. You know, there's no, you can't really say there's any real like, um, like, like his strategy is just kind of just you, you can't really explain it, and you you and it doesn't look good, but it gets the job done, and that's kind of what Trevor Peak does. Um, definitely super durable. Um, you know, can go to decision. Uh, wings bombs, trying to finish the fight at all times. Um, he'll be going up against. You know, Ashmoosh, who, you know, they're, they got power, but uh, I just don't think since their last loss that their head's in it. And, um, yeah, I think that uh, Trevor Peak's going to be able to take them to the later rounds and win by decision. I really, really hate this fight. Not that I hate this fight because it's a bad fight. It's a great fight. Um, I just hate the pick that I'm getting ready to make. I'm going to go with Trevor Peak, man. And I don't like it. Uh, Trevor Peak is 
the least skilled MMA fighter in all of UFC. Whoa, buddy. Uh, sorry, bro. Like, if you hear this, you know what I mean? It is what it is. But he has the most heart, the most will to stand, the, 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 the most granite diamond chin I've ever seen in my life. Um, he just does not fall. He's, he's a goddamn fucking walking dead zombie. He's going to just keep coming at you. Um, and, and I think that's, that's how he, I mean, that's obviously how he's won all, almost all of his fights. Um, he, he's a monster, uh, in that respect, as far as like his ability to strike trash, his ability to grapple trash, his ability to take down trash, his ability to do, uh, to, to, to defend trash. Like, and so like, it, it just boggles my mind that I have to pick him, but it just makes sense to pick Trevor Peak in this particular, uh, instance. Cause I think uh, Ash Moose does not have the uh, the the strength to knock him down to the ground. I don't think he has the grappling ability to 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 submit him. Um, and I'm not sure if he has the heart to run with Trevor Peak for fucking three rounds. Um, so I've got to go with Trevor Peak from. Where's Trevor Peak from? He's got to be from like the, the the Appalachians or some shit like that. Oh, I think he's from Texas or some shit. Is like he? That. That's what I want. Let's see. Say. Let's have a look because I feel like he he's like seems like an Appalachian motherfucker to me. Uh, Trevor Peak is from... or maybe like Louisiana. Maybe I'll I'll give him that. Let's see. He's from Alabama. Alabama. All right. Well, probably down in Tennessee. That goddamn deep south shit. Where they just fucking throw bales of hay and make it fucking happen. Damn right! You know what I mean? <laughs> Probably spits chewing cage shit. Trevor Peak's my guy. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a light. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. What a dumbass. We got a flyweight bout between Matt Schnell going up against Cody Durden. We got Schnell coming in. They are 6-6 six and six with one no contest in the UFC. 16 and 8 with that one no contest overall and are coming in uh 2 and 3 in their oh wait actually um 1 3 and 1 no contest in their last 5 bouts uh we got Cody Durden coming in they are 5 and 4 with one draw in the UFC 16 and 6 with that one draw overall and three and two in their last five bouts. I'm gonna be going with Durden in this one. I just think that they'll have an edge in the uh, grappling department on this one. But also, um, I'm not gonna say they have the edge in the striking, but uh, Matt Schnell's chin is just very questionable for me. Uh, they just recently got their head taken off by Steve Ursag. Um, They were stiffened up in that one. Don't get me wrong, uh, Durden, you know, just lost. Uh, by TKO in their last bout, uh, you know, definitely took a took took a punishment, but um, I wouldn't say in the same way that Schnell did in their last bout and has over the course of their career. I'm gonna go with Durden. I hope that Cody Durden uses the pink soap and turns into Tyler Durden. <laughs> what? Me, bro. I swear, watch. We're, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna run a, a highlight video, bro, <laughs> of just how many fucking fight uh, club references we've gotten in this fucking <laughs> show, bro. Or in yeah, in our uh, pod, bro. Like it's crazy. Like it's crazy. Like I already called it out. I want to say the last time I was like, "Oh, bro, we have to hear another fucking fight club fucking reference," and that's this time. <laughs> This fucking guy, bro, you're always going to bring it back to fucking... All right, hey, salute. But we need to start getting something <laughs> off of that, bro. If we're going to keep bringing this shit up as much as we do. <coughs> anyway, I That's hope... That's funny, bro. ...that Cody Durden uses the pink soap and turns into Tyler Durden. Oh, my God. Um, And you know what I mean? Handles what he's supposed to handle. Fucking fights like the man he's supposed to fight. Like, he's on a, what, a two-fight <coughs> skid right now? Um, I, but I think he's better, uh, obviously better. 
um, than than Schnell. Uh, I think sh- they both have fucking very uh, glass jaws, glass jaw Joe ass motherfuckers. Um, but I think uh, Cody Durden has a uh, slightly uh, more tempered glass jaw than uh, Matt Schnell. Um, so I've got to go with uh, Cody Durden. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we got another uh, featherweight bout on the card. We got Kyle Nelson. They will be going up against Steve Garcia. We got Kyle Nelson coming in 4-4 four four with one draw in the UFC. 16-5 and five with that one draw overall. And uh, we got Steve Gar... Oh, I'm sorry. And they're 3-2 and two in their last five. We got Steve Garcia coming in. They are going to be five and two in the UFC, sixteen and five overall, and they are right now four and one in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Steve Garcia. He's just you know kind of uh, been on a tear. Out of those, even though he's four and one in those last five, uh, he strung together his last four wins. So he's definitely uh, putting it together. He's deadly on the feet. He's definitely gonna have the. Uh, edge in that department um Kyle Nelson he's definitely you know somewhat of a dog he can you know he's seen those late rounds and he's pulled out some victories and he's able to you know kind of you know take withstand some punishment but uh I'm gonna be going with uh Garcia in this one I think he's just gonna he's probably gonna knock uh Nelson out so uh yeah that's who I'll be going with uh I've got to go with the uh with the uh, I'm not going with the Ginger Ninja. I'm not going with Kyle Nelson. I'm definitely going with Garcia. Um, he's going to give Kyle Nelson a little bit of act, right? Um, he's he's the better fighter. He's more of the dog fighter. Uh, he's just a savage. Um, he's got uh he's got a better resume. Um, look at the folks that he's beat the fuck up. Like they're savages. What? You call this fool the ginger ninja? The 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 Kyle Nelson? Yeah. yeah. He's ginger. I know, but I was I was looking up his nickname. I was like, is that what he's called? It was just called the monster. <laughs> he called this fool fucking <laughs> ginger ninja. I'm like, what the f-? I was like immediately I was like, nah, that don't sound right, but <laughs> I mean it. I get it. <laughs> My bad. I didn't mean to take you off. You, you, you fucking hey, boy, man. Dog. I Steve just... Garcia wins the game, runs it up. <laughs> you know what I mean? We'll, we'll just go. We're going to keep going. Let's go. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, We got a fly. Moving on. We got the co-main event. We got a, a flyweight bout in the women's division. We got Jessica Andrade going up against Natalia Silva. We got Jessica Andrade, last long-standing vet, you know, in the UFC and the women's division, bouncing between divisions again, moving up from straw weight to fly weight. Uh, seventeen and ten over. I'm sorry, seventeen and ten in the UFC, twenty-six and twelve overall, and two and three in their last five. We got Natalia Silva coming in. They are going to be five and zero in the UFC, seventeen and five with one draw overall, and they are currently riding a eleven fight win streak, I believe. Yeah. And I it's been it's a, it's a win streak, that. I believe, since uh, two thousand eighteen. Right? Ridiculous. Am I correct? Yeah. Since two thousand eighteen. Well, actually, before then. Two thousand eighteen. Yeah, they've been riding that win streak. Like, I'm not sure why this is possibly going to be a debate, but go ahead and let me know your pick is, my guy. Well, Jessica Andrade is going to knock fucking Silva out. Or she's going to just basically just, you know, overwhelm her with aggression uh, that, you know, Silva has yet to, in my opinion, to see in her career. And, uh, yeah, she's going to, you know... Get her first UFC loss in her career. Some of that. Cool. Is that all? Yep. All right. Let me explain to you first of all. Um, Silva is super long um, as far as her reach goes. Um, Jessica Andrade is past her fucking prime. 
uh, second of all. Um, and, like, I get it. Like, Jessica Andrade, let me give her flowers a little bit. She has a, uh, a crazy resume. I mean, she's fought the best of the best in the game. Like, I can't take that away from her. Uh, and I don't want to take that away from her. But at the end of the day, she's getting ready to pass the torch on this particular fight. Because she's just not that one anymore. Unfortunately. She's a straw weight contender. She's a 115 contender. Um, Natalia Silva is a natural 125. Jessica Andrade is, I know, she's bounced back and forth and she's done all the things. She's not, she probably is a natural 125, but she bounces back and forth. So it, that's kind of a problem for me. Uh, so I think that uh, Natalia Silva takes this one down. Natalia Silva is going to be the new face of this, uh, this division. Um, after this fight, um, if she's not, well, she's already in the, uh, in the top 15, right? I believe so. Worldwide, yeah. Like, I think there's a title fight coming after this for her. Or at least a, a pay-per-view event, if nothing less, for her. And I think she beats the shit out of Jessica Andrade. Jessica Andrade, had, she strung together two good wins. Solid. That's it. That's all that's going to happen. You good? Yep. Okie dokie. All right. Moving on to the main event of the evening. What the hell was that? That was light. That was, that was real light. That was mad light, bro. But like, uh, you could like, you could still just like put the fucking like the clip in there. We got a welterweight bout between Gilbert Burns going up against Sean Brady. Uh, we got Burns coming in. 15 and 7 in the UFC, 22 and 7 overall, and are currently 2 and 3 in their last five. We got Brady coming in. They are going to be 6 and 1 in the UFC, 16 and 1 overall, and 4 and 1 in their last five bouts. Um, I'm going to be going with Burns in this one. Um, I know that Brady, you know. He's uh the he's still a top pros I would I, I'm not even gonna say a prospect. He's you know a ranked contender, you know, and you know, people still believe that he'll be, you know, a title contender, you know, down the road in his career, but I don't know. I feel like Gilbert Burns not necessarily has a title run left in him, but I feel like he still he ne he when he's lost here recently it was just unfortunate circumstances. I wouldn't say that he was like really losing fights. He blew out a shoulder in one fight and ended up making it to the end of that fight with that compromised shoulder against the current champion, Bilal Muhammad. And then, you know, just made a mistake in the last minute of a fight that he was winning, you know, against a top prospect, you know, and ranked fighter. But I would stay still like in a proving stage of his career, Jack Della Maddalena. Um... With Sean Brady, I just don't think he has uh, the hands. I don't think he can keep up with uh, Burns with the hands. And uh, in terms of grappling, I feel like Burns can match him or be better than him. I mean, Brady will have an age advantage, but outside of that, you know, I just believe that Burns uh, is going to want it more. And, uh, you know, still, he has, you know, a lot left in the tank. It's just, he's just had a couple of uh, bad ones you know, due to circumstances, not to say that we're out of his control, but just, you know, they, they were freak circumstances, in my opinion. I'll be going with Burns. I just hope this isn't a cage match between Tom Brady Boom. and Mr. Burns. Excellent. I hope that it's a cage match between Sean Brady and Gilbert Burns. Because Gilbert Burns, even though he's a little bit older, and Sean Brady is definitely an up and coming prospect and has a lot of uh of potential to 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 be great. Um I think Gilbert Burns has just ran into some absolute savage killing murderers. Um and that's via Jack Della Madalena and uh and Bilal Muhammad. Um those two losses being on your record back to back how can you really say like can you really feel bad about that no you mm -hmm. ran into two of the 
biggest, best monsters in all of UFC. That's in all Brady's, of mixed martial arts. Brady's only loss is to Bilal Muhammad. Yes. The difference between his loss and Burns' loss is Brady lost, you know, got, you know, the fight stopped due to strikes mm -hmm. against Muhammad. Muhammad won a decision, you know, uh, versus, Burns. versus Burns with a compromised shoulder. So I think this is a very good test of like who Brady is. Um, is he Tom Brady? Boom. Or is he, um, what's her name? Uh, Wendy Brady or whatever the fucking middle Brady is. <laughs> Marsha Brady or some shit. No, Jan Marcia. Brady. Marcia, Jan Brady. Marcia, Marcia. Like, are you fucking Sean Brady or are you Jan Brady? Like, that's the question we really have right now. <laughs> um, but because we know Gilbert Burns, even though he's as old as Mr. Burns, that he's going to definitely fucking make you learn. <laughs> so, that being said, I'm going with Gilbert Burns on this one. Um... I think he takes it down. That's where I'm at. You know what I mean? Lots of random ass punny things I just said. It's good. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, this concludes the predictions and picks portion of our show. Uh, going into the parlay section, do you have any parlays? I've got uh, fucking golden parlays, motherfuckers. Please go ahead and start it off this time then, sir. I'm going to start. So I've got two different... Um, Betting strategies for you guys. And I'm going to run through both of them. And I want you guys to fucking really listen to me before you fucking start acting up. And like, call me not the parlay god. And like, parlay pro. Or like, the parlay dude. Or some fucking dumbass shit that I'm definitely not going to go by. I'm the goddamn parlay god. So, that being said. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start this parlay off. And again, don't get crazy. Don't start spending your whole goddamn fucking rent budget. You know what I mean? A couple bucks. A dollar here, a dollar there. Three here, five there. Whatever it is. Don't get fucking wild. But watch how these parlays make you smile. <laughs> go ahead, oh, my bro. Here we go again. Uh, I don't even really know half of what you said, but... Mine is going to be very, very simplified. Uh, I'm just going to give y'all very simple. Um, Lima and Garcia. And then you can spice it up by adding Andraj on top. And you can spice it up even further or switch it out, you know, however you, you know, like your spice level uh, with burns. Boom. Base okay. two. Spicy three, or you can make it a four. Okay. Like you're getting all fucking Transformer on it and shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. This nigga thinks he's Mark Wahlberg and shit. Whatever. So we got that. 
Um, as far as we, so it's been, a, it's been a while since, you know, we seen y'all because, uh, we had a week off and stuff. So we'll put the graphics up here, letting you know, uh, what the results were from the last card. Uh, they're just, I don't got them right now off the top of my head. So you'll see those right there, I'm but still I know winning, baby. bro had a better night than I did, which means that he's, you know, probably got I think 11 a, fights. A fight or two, you know, added, added that to his, you know, uh, overall record, you know, against me. And, uh, yeah, so you'll see all that here in the middle. Outside of that, um, just want to uh, remind everybody to check out our new, new discussions. You know, Bros Talk MMA for real. You know, we have these new clips that we've been posting up. Uh, our latest one about John Jones, you know, and just how we feel about him. In his, uh, you know, character, career, and, you know, the heavyweight landscape at this point. Um, outside of that, make sure that you like, uh, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure that you follow us on IG at Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at r1.mason. And you can follow me at Utica underscore SME. Oh, make sure you follow us on TikTok as well, Bros Talk MMA. And uh, yeah, bro, fucking um, this is our thirtieth episode. Hey, you doing right? Yeah, I'm doing good, thing, hey, uh, definitely. Hey. And still we're still in the progress. positive. We're yeah. still in the positive after thirty episodes. Thirty episodes, which means thirty events. All events that uh, have taken place this year, we've covered them all. That being said, <laughs> this has been another episode of your favorite predictions, picks, and uh, betting MMA channel, Bros Talk MMA. <laughs> I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. The Parlay Prince. I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's the parlay God. It's Black Nostradamus. It's Black Jesus. It's Black Moses taking my people to the promised land. Give me my belt. Hand me my crown. Yes, indeed. Uh, until then, we wish y'all the best of luck this weekend. We'll see y'all next week covering the uh, pay-per-view event going down at the Sphere. That's going to be a bantamweight championship bout between Sean O'Malley and Marab Davalishvili. We'll see y'all then. I'm going Davishvili. Just fucking give y'all a sneak peek. And uh, until then, until next time, we out.